Hello. In this video, I will show you how we can use Mohs circle to determine stress and strain under plain stress conditions. Suppose we have this cubic element in figure A under plain stress conditions. Plain stress means that two faces of the cubic element is free of any stress. So we have these two normal components, non-zero, and this tau x y, the shear stress, non-zero. And we have these three other components of a stress, zero. This normal and these two shear stresses. So what if we rotate this element about z-axis for theta, and then we want to calculate the components of a stress with respect to this rotated coordinate system x prime, y prime, z prime. We have these three transformation equations for plane stress. So if we rotate the element for theta about the axis, then we have these three components of stress, sigma x, sigma y, and tau x, y, that we can plug into these three equations and calculate these three components of stress with respect to the rotated coordinate system. The transformation equations are in fact an equation for a circle. So if you plot the data that you have at any given rotation angle with respect to normal stress and shear stress, you can get the circle which is called Mohr circle. Mohr circle is a graphical method to determine normal and shear stress. So instead of using those transformation equations, you can use this Mohr circle, which can be easily drawn. Once you have the center, which is always the average of normal stresses, and the radius, which can be calculated using this Pythagoras method for this triangle here. So at any point on the perimeter of the circle, the distance from vertical axis would be normal stress in x direction, the distance from horizontal axis would be shear stress. And if you consider the other end of the diameter, you would get normal stress in y axis. So notice that all the angles in more circle are twice the angles in reality. So we have this 180 degree between y-axis and x-axis, which in reality is 90 degrees. So, um, always notice that the angles here are twice the angles in reality. Now, notice at point A and B, we don't have any shear stress. Shear stress is zero. So the plane that crosses these two points is called principal plane and stress these normal stresses at point A, which is maximum stress, and at point B, which is minimum stress, are principal stresses. And this principal plane can be calculated using this equation. So the theta for the angle of principal plane is obtained from this equation. Notice that at point D and E, we have maximum shear stress. At point D, we have positive shear stress. And at point E, we have negative maximum shear stress. So, and notice that the angle between um, the plane that crosses D and E and this principal plane is nine, 90 degree. So in reality, it would be 45 degree. So at 45 degree with respect to the principal plane, we would have maximum shear stress. In this example, we use Mohr circle to determine stresses. Mohr circle can also be used in determining strain. So we have normal strain in the horizontal axis and shear strain in vertical axis. Notice that normal stress is changes in length, while shear strain is changes in angle. When changes in angle is clockwise, the shear strain is considered positive. When 
it is counterclockwise, it is considered negative. So this example is for a strain. The only difference is that we have this um, 1 over 2, which we didn't have for more circle in for stresses. So here, the format of the formula for the center of the circle is the same. The radius is also the same. We only have this divided by 2 here. And the theta of principal plane is calculated from this equation. So at any point on the perimeter of the circle, you can determine normal stress and shear, normal strain and shear strain. Notice that here again, the angles in the Mohr circle are twice the angles in reality. Now suppose we have a uniaxial stress condition, and like uh, the experiment that you did for experiment 2 in the lab, strain rosette, and we want to determine more circle for stress and for strain. So we have sigma x normal stress in x direction at this point, and as this is uniaxial stress, there is no normal stress in y direction. So this would be even more simple than the plane stress that we already covered. So for normal stress in x direction, we have load divided by area, and normal stress in y direction is zero. As the center of the Mohr circle is the average of these two normal stresses, you are ready to draw the circle. From the data that you have for stress, you can determine strain and draw a circle of Mohr for strain. So we have this data and we can calculate normal strain in x direction and y direction. In x direction it would be p over ea and in y direction it would be negative no p over ea and no is the Poisson's ratio. So now that the center of the circle is the average of these two normal strain, you would be able to draw the most circle here. Now in this small circle you can determine maximum shear stress as you have normal stress as p over a and this is equal to the diameter of the circle you can guess that the this distance which is the radius of circle would be p over a divided by 2 because this is diameter and this is radius now similarly in more circle for strain you can calculate maximum strain, maximum shear strain, using these equations and knowing that here the radius of the circle is the maximum shear strain that you have divided by 2. And from this equation, and knowing that we have this relation between shear strain and shear stress, we could get to this relation between modulus of rigidity and modulus of elasticity. Now notice that at this plane, at theta equals to zero, we have this principal plane because there is no shear stress here at this plane. And at 90 degree with respect to this plane in most circle, we have this maximum shear stress which in reality would be 45 degrees.